welcome everyone to our second meeting. We are excited to have all of you, even if it is virtually, we are happy to see each one of you. If you would, will you sign in to our, to our team up? It just lets us know who's attending the meetings and you also receive points for attending. Give you a minute to sign in. Also, you can use a team up. It's an app on your phone. We'll talk about it later, but it just helps you keep track of what's going on and what events we have that you can earn points for attending. I don't see the sign up button on my side. When you scan the QR code. Yeah, it just like it brings up like the general meeting number two. It's just there's no button that says sign up. Hold on one second. I will have the SNA IT team work on this for you. Thank you. <laughs> As we speak. I love that you have an IT team. Oh, yes, definitely. You have to in these virtual days. <laughs> I can see who, uh, there's a good amount of people signing in. Uh, so whoever had that issue, if you're still having an issue, uh, let me know. I'll try again one more time and then I'll let okay. you know. Refresh your page and see if that helps also. I think I confirm that mine went through because it's like saying that I already did it and I haven't. Samantha, is that the name that you signed up with on team up? Yeah. I got you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And on team up, you'll find all the night ed talks, which also you get points for, which we will talk about later as well. Don't want to give too much information away. Uh, it's still not working. I'm sorry. That's okay, Claudia. If anything, we usually cross check our Zoom participants against this, so we'll still make sure that you get credit for tonight. Thanks for trying. Okay. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you for your help. All right, tonight we have Dr. Spaulding, which is our uh, faculty advisor of the SNEA. If you do not know Dr. Spaulding, I'm sorry for that and get to know her, take her classes. That's all I can tell you, you will not be sorry. <laughs> She's gonna discuss a couple of things with us before we get started on our meeting and then we'll send her on her way. So nice of you, Michelle. Thank you for the nice shout out. I welcome all of you to take any of my classes. Uh, in the spring, I'll be teaching LAE 3414 and SSE 3312. I love being the advisor of this amazing group of teacher candidates. Uh, the last couple of years, SNEA has grown and has taken on so many educational opportunities. It just makes me so proud. And while we're in this pandemic and I realize we can't do some of the things that we normally would do each semester, I do look forward to the time that we can all get together and we are still making plans for virtual opportunities. So very quickly, that's what I'm here to discuss with you. One, uh, for the last 10 years, I've done a passion project called Read for the Record and Read for the Record is provided by a nonprofit group called uh, Jumpstart. And this year, Read for the Record is on October 29th. And uh, Miss Marnie Kay and I are actually going to do a Read for the Record Night Ed Talks on October 21st to teach everyone more about the opportunity. So one of the outreach projects that I started about three years ago was with Seminole County High Schools. So there are six high schools in Seminole County that actually have early childhood programs on site. And many of you might have been uh, in those classes when you were in high school. Uh, Lake Howell High School is where uh, my children attended and my uh, son is a senior this year. So I've got a connection there and it's actually my alma mater as well. I attended Lake Howell High School. So about three years ago, I talked with them and said, hey, do you think that our teacher candidates could come and work with your juniors and seniors in high school 
to have this connection and do you think we could teach you all about this great program called Read for the Record? So of course they said yes, and every year since then they've said yes. So this year, technically what's coming up this month uh, is an opportunity for you all. It is not necessarily read for the record because look at what uh, Kylie so nicely added to the slide. Because of the pandemic, they have pushed the uh, pre-K fours class that is usually on site at each of these six high schools in Seminole County, they've pushed it off to a start date of January after the winter break. So right now, the juniors and seniors in high school do not have children to teach. Therefore, we are going to go out and provide about a half hour, really recruitment opportunity, which we used to do that and then do read for the record kind of information with the high school students for this fall, specifically coming up this month um, during the third and fourth week of October and then the first week of November, we're going to go out and just do uh, a recruitment opportunity with these high school students. We know that they're already going to be teaching children, so we are going to go out and do some sessions with them about what our college has to offer. And one of the big things that our college has to offer is student organizations like yours. So I have Dr. Blanche, Dr. Hoffman, Dr. Kelly, and myself. So there are four of us that are going to serve the six local high schools. We are right now, they know these dates as you see them on the uh, slide. Be on, at some point during those weeks, those six high schools are going to schedule uh, these sessions with us for us to virtually meet with their uh, juniors and seniors. I think last year we met with about 260 juniors and seniors in high school. It's a wonderful recruiting opportunity because literally we're right down the street from Seminole County Schools. And we want these students that are acting as teachers now to consider becoming teachers like you. So once I know, I will send Kylie the information as to the dates. We'll be serving Lake Howell High School, Oviedo High School, Haggerty High School, Lake Brantley High School, Lyman High School, and Lake Mary High School. So we'll have those schools. I know I've had students in the past that have gone to those schools with me that actually attended those high schools and they wanted to go back. So keep a lookout for the schools themselves and then the actual dates and times. And if it works for you, we'd love for you to sign up and join us. You would actually be sharing information about SNEA. Kylie very nicely added some fabulous pictures to the presentation that we have going and basically uh, offering your college perspective to high school students that are trying to figure out where they're going to go to school next. I think that's all I have. So I will, um, I'll make sure that I communicate those dates. And for now, those are some of the virtual opportunities that we have for you to um, add points to your uh, list of points that you're getting from attending general meetings, uh, because of course we're going to work to give out a scholarship at the end of this semester, and we would love for one of you to earn it. Who wouldn't love $250, all right? So keep an eye out, and uh, I'm gonna leave you all in wonderful hands. Let me check the chat, anything? Okay, so we're all good. Does anyone have any questions before I let your wonderful officers enlighten you? Okay, one last thing. You're welcome, Zelly. I miss you too. And uh, I'm really, really impressed with the SNEA STE Night Ed Talks YouTube channel. And I'm hoping that everyone, I shared it with all of my students today in my social studies class. Uh, it is so professional. It is so just well organized. I hope that everyone will subscribe to that and know that we'll continue to add uh, the Night Ed Talks presentations as they come about this semester. Angelica, fantastic. I mean, really, that looks fabulous. All right, everyone. Very proud of you. Thank you, Angelica, because I know it's a lot of hard work. We've got some oh, great stuff. I have one on. question. Go ahead, go. It's a um, senior internship question. So yeah. for my PDT, I already turned it into sign in and everything like that. But how do I revise my PDF back into a Word document so I can fill out my midpoint. I'm like, so, <laughs> I'm so confused. <laughs> you should, you should be able to take the PDF 
and open it as a different document. So, I mean, you should be able to export it into a Word document or something like that. Okay, but I'll you're the it. second per is it Kimberly that's talking? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> right. You're the second person to ask, and one was in my class, and I said, aesthetically speaking, I'm I'm more about the quality of the content than what it looks like. I'm really the only one that's seeing it beyond your supervising teacher and clinical coordinator. So yeah. I know what you're saying. Like you get those little lines. Yeah. That are, oh I know God. it's making you crazy. I get it, but as a capstone instructor and the shepherd of all capstone instructors, we don't take points off for the aesthetics. We're looking for the actual content. So don't drive yourself crazy, Kimberly. Just put Okay, a thank you so much. I was going crazy over here. <laughs> Thanks, okay. Dr. Slaughter. You're welcome. All right, you all have a wonderful meeting and charge on teacher nights. Thank you. Welcome. All right, we're going to get started. First, we have an icebreaker. In this icebreaker, you're gonna turn on your camera. That means yes, camera off means no. So we're going to get started. And if this meeting is recorded, so if you don't wanna turn your camera on, we understand. You can take part in the chat if you would like, whatever you guys feel is necessary for you. Oh, Kimberly got her camera on. <laughs> I'm about to click so it on and off turn, for the first one. Don't worry. <laughs> turn the camera on if it's yes and turn it off if it's no. Yes. And Paul, you're driving. Please don't. <laughs> please don't danger yourself. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Our first. Sure, Paul. <laughs> our first question. How is internship slash online classes going for you? Camera on. They're going great. Camera off. Not so great. Kimberly's coming back and forth. <laughs> we have a lot of cameras on, which is great to see. Next question. I am loving virtual learning. How are you liking virtual learning compared to our normal in-class? I know UCF classes are a little harder. And of course, if you're an internship, going virtual is hard as well. Next question. I am in an internship currently. Yes, keep your cameras on. No, turn your cameras off. I want you to keep your camera on if you are in internship and you are teaching face to face. We have a lot of cameras on. I like to see that. I like to hear that everybody is in the school still and gets this experience. Next question. I am a certification track. So are you going to be certified as a teacher when you graduate? Yes, cameras on, no, or yeah, no cameras off. <laughs> Olga gave us a little peace out sign. <laughs> Next question, a little lighter, fun. I write with pencils. Yes, camera on, no camera off. I know us teachers like colored pens and make everything fancy, but. <laughs> Oh, Zelly showing all her pencils. Look at that. <laughs> I am going out to vote. It's election year. Cameras on, yes. No cameras off. Does it count if I vote already? It does. <laughs> early. You're an early achiever there, Zelly. You and your bucket of pencils. <laughs> Next question, I've attended a night ed talk. I know all of us are trying to push night eds to everyone. You get points, which build towards your scholarship. And we also have had Zelly help facilitate a night ed talk as well, which she received double points for that. Perfect, I see a lot of cameras on, which is good to see. I'm all right, that was our- really quick. Sorry, sure. if you're interested in helping us with night ed, please let us know. Yes, definitely. Carla, you want to take this one? Of course, our member appreciation for this week slash this month slash today is Miss <laughs> Walden. Congratulations. We chose you because we've seen you in a lot of virtual events. We saw that you attended the student FEA meeting. We saw that you attended our general body meetings and a number of night ed talks. So thank you, Bonnie, for attending and we hope to see you in future events as well. 
We will continue to do SNEA members. We called this one of the month, but it's kind of going to be whenever we see someone outstanding or attending multiple events. Um, we could post another one tomorrow. Look out on social media if you might be the next member appreciation. Congrats, Bonnie. All right, these are our, this is our leaderboard for points so far. We have Zelly at the top with 33 points. And then we have three tied for second place, Jocelyn, Shana, if I said that correctly, and Bonnie. You can scan that QR code. It will show you what events are upcoming or that we have already had and how many points you get for each one. This is a good way to keep track of what you're doing, um, general meetings, are five, night at talks I know are four. If you help facilitate, it doubles, so you get eight for one. How do we know, like, is there a spot that we can go to see our points? Yes, um, I don't know if it's updated. I can have the IT department check. <laughs> Kylie, that's your new name, by the way. <laughs> I um, do not accept this role. <laughs> too bad. But it is, there, we have an Excel. Okay, go for it. Sorry, um, my internet lag. So if I interrupt you in the middle of your speaking, I apologize in advance. Um, we are working on having a platform for that. Um, the only issue I have is giving out personal information. Um, so we are working towards making, walking that line between making it publicly accessible and also um, accessible for you guys on a daily basis. So if you ever have a question about your membership and your points, you're more than welcome to email us or DM us or anything like that. And we will get back to you super quick about um, how many points you have. Um, but it is like a kind of a privacy thing to make it completely public. Um, so we are working on that. But if you have questions about your specific, just let us know. Perfect, thank you. We should do code names. Like she can be the penciler <laughs> or the dollars, Dollar Tree Bandit or something like that. Oh, we all know who that is. <laughs> That's a good idea, Paul. Maybe everybody can come up with their own gamer name that we can assign their points to. All right, we have themes each month. All these themes go out to the Florida Education Association. So beyond our student level, the Florida Education Association puts out these themes so that we can stay connected on social media and we all can see what other chapters are doing along the way and how we can promote whatever the theme is. This month's theme is internship. So you can share on social media for points. Um, always tag us, which will always be at the bottom of the graphic. And I wrote an idea for you guys. If you're not an internship, what are you looking forward to? What are you nervous about? Maybe you can get some collaboration from other aspiring educators on social media. A couple questions. Question. Sure. Okay. Megan, um, what if our social media is private though? Because like if y'all don't follow and we tag you, then you won't see it. Then what? For that one, I would just say um, we, so we actually really want to meet with you guys specifically because I know we have a lot of new members this semester about making professional social media. Um, it's by no means required to have, but we do recommend that you have a professional social media that is public so that you can give employers the handle and be like, hey, look what I did last week. I'm amazing because you guys are amazing and we want you to showcase that. Um, for this, so we would like you to have that in the future, um, but it's by no means required. So I would recommend um, just send us a screenshot of how whatever you do if you are on private and I know it is kind of a pain. Um, and if anything, we should be able to follow you back. So we should be able to see what you post. Um, so if you are going to be engaging with us, please make sure that you we're both following each other so that we can see everything. And then if you still have issues, just reach out to us and we'll do it by a case by case basis. Okay. Yeah, if you DM us, if you DM us, we can follow you and then that should solve that problem, hopefully, if you are able to tag us. Some questions you can talk about. Remember, I know we're not as service, in service teachers, we're not allowed to post pictures of students in our classroom, at least their faces, we have to blur them out. Um, so just keep that in mind as well. 
what has been your biggest takeaway from internship if you're in it or even if you're in just um what do they call it the pre-volunteer um service learning hours service learning thank you even if you're doing service learning hours you can use this platform as a same a same like they're both the same you can say what you've done. We all like to gloat about our good days. We like to ask for help on our not so good days. So just use social media as a platform to build your relationships with educators all over the world, which as Kylie said, we would like to have some of our meetings talking about professional social medias because when you are in an interview, they are looking for the social medias before you go into your interview they're going to search you on social media you want to make sure what they find is professional and we can get into that another time but just keep that in mind all right night ed talks we briefly talked talked about this night ed talks are four points a session you can earn up to eight if you are a facilitator. I know Zelly just facilitated last week and did a great job with Angelica. And all you have to do is, hi, welcome to the Night Ed Talk. Um, facilitate the chat, make sure the chat is going well. If you can answer a question, answer it. Send out the certification link and then and close the Night Ed Talk. Thank you for coming. Thank you to our presenter. And that's it. And you can earn eight points that easy. The QR code will send you to the calendar on UCF's page so you can keep that bookmarked on your computer. And these are just some of the other ones that are coming up this month. October 8th, what is FERPA and why is it important for me? Um, October 13th, giving students a voice with communication boards. I know all of us want to include everyone in our classroom and have the diversity that we do in the classroom. So this is a great opportunity to learn more about what you can do as an educator. October 14th, OCPS induction, beginning teacher supports, which I know some of us were at the night ed talk tonight, which is the similar topic. Just getting to know what is expected of you as a first year educator or teacher. October 21st, read for the record, Dr. Spaulding touched on this. Her and Marty K, Professor K, are going to be doing this night ed talk on October 21st. Hopefully we'll have more concrete details about what read for the record is going to look like. And October 22nd, teaching with tech, what one-to-one -one is really like. Um, I think this is the most important night ed talk that we can have right now since most of us are trying to do everything virtually. October 27th, remote teaching strategies. Um, this is featuring STE, so that's who we're partnered with for these night ed talks. So this will be Wendell and I think Dr. Kennedy performing this night ed talk. In October 29th, we have multi-sensory approach to literacy instruction. All of these are beneficial to when you're a first year teacher, second year teacher and beyond. You can take information from each of these meetings and use them in your classroom, whether you're service learning or out there teaching. And I know, like I said, Zelly did a great job. I don't know if Zelly wants to promote facilitating. It's not hard, it's not bad, it's not nerve wracking, you've got this. So um, I have, I, I co-facilitate, so Angelica did most of the job, but I have one tomorrow and I'm a little nervous, but, I, <laughs> but I'm a little nervous, but it's not hard. Um, and you need to learn to talk in front of people for teaching. So this is a good experience. <laughs> this is correct. Yes. And we have an entire PowerPoint of the steps for you. We made it as easy as possible for you and laid out what you say. You can read it directly off the slide if you get nervous. Um, we try to do the best to make it as easy for you because you're helping all of us officers out by taking over one of the night ed talk sessions. And there's always an officer present. Correct. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yep, we're always there to help you. Carla, you want to take this slide away? Of course. So um, at the beginning of the year, we had proposed ourselves as um, officers a goal 
I've reached out to other chapters in Florida um, for more member engagement and kind of a network opportunity that just goes beyond UCF. So we are in processes of forming a collaboration with FAMU, which is an HBCU up in Tallahassee, and they're aspiring at program because we have had a lot of previous activities through the student FEA program and we've bonded a lot with them. So we just wanted to kind of forge that bond and get our new members and existing members also to kind of, like I said, network and make new friends. Um, so we are proposing this idea kind of like a secret exchange program where we're calling it an aspiring ed exchange and for now, we will be sending out an interest form regarding what budget each one of you is comfortable with because we want to make sure that we can get as many of you to participate in this um, event. So if you feel that you aren't really comfortable with a particular budget, feel free to reach out to us and we will do our best to accommodate to your specific needs because we know that with COVID, there's a lot going on financially and we don't want to add another burden or struggle to your life. Um, so that being said, I will be sending out an email at the end of the week with the form that has a lot more information on it. But basically the idea behind this event is for each one of the participating members for each campus to draw a name or be assigned to a different person from the opposite chapter. And you will, within a budget, have to get a gift for that person. There will be a little form which the person will add the ideas of things that they wish to have, whether it be books, classroom materials, some things that they may need, teacher related, but not specifically very in your face teacher, whatever you need. Um, so you can reach out to that person, we'll give you their information as well for you to bond with that person, which is the idea behind this, and basically get them a, a gift that they both need and hopefully will appreciate in your long lasting friendship, which we hope happens. But yes, if you have any doubts about this initiative, feel free, as always, DM, email us. If you're in the group, me, just reach out your ideas, type them in, and we'll answer them. But yeah, more coming this Friday with the interest form. Thank you, Carla. And also, I wanted to add, we are looking to do this through Amazon. As of right now, because of COVID, we were thinking about traveling and meeting halfway with the officers of this college, but we have decided with UCF's guidelines that it's probably safer if we just Amazon these packages to whoever, whomever we get, um, whoever we draw. So like Carla said, the interest form will go out in an email later this week. And you guys will be able to fill it out. We'll be able to see how many people are interested in this. And we we'll also will have a question stating the range of funds that you might want to spend and look at it a little deeper and see what we can do with this, as Carla said, to form this bond with them. I know we went to the spring conference and started this bond with them over in um, February. So when we go to the conferences, it would be nice for all of us to know somebody and just have this relationship. All right, this I'm SC sorry, can I ask sure. another question? Sure. Um, I guess my code name would be the questioner. <laughs> but um, so you said you'll send out more information about that on Friday? Yes, there's an email going out. Um, it is technically not approved, but approved. Um, we're just waiting on the final little tweaks to be done. UCF has to approve because of COVID guidelines. So we're just, it would be approved today, but we're not 100% sure. But Friday an email will go out with the interest form. It'll say, if everybody could complete it, that would be great. Um, yes or no, you are interested, how much you might be interested in, um, what you're interested in, um, whether it's books or pens, maybe you really want some pens that you just won't buy yourself or... Zelly said she wanted pencils. I'm sure, <laughs> yeah. Her bucket was a little low there, so... <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah, and I also wanted to mention quickly that um, this is an initiative that we have already spoken with the FAMU leaders. However, just like us, they have to receive approval from their advisor, which is 
the last step we're waiting for, which we're already approved, but just like Michelle said, the last touches, which is the same thing that they're going through. Um, so it's basically an interest form to then just gauge you on what you're comfortable with and if you'd even participate in such an event. Um, so there's no, uh, how do you say, like, we're not forcing you, just you, when you form, when you sign the form, you aren't committing to participating. It's just so you can give us information. So if for some reason you feel like backing out, obviously before we draw other people's names, wouldn't want someone to not get a gift. Um, but yeah, feel free to let us know if you don't feel comfortable participating after you send out the form. All right, any more questions? All right, virtual grad fair. Normally this is held in the Merck and you get to go around to the different booths and find out what master programs or next level programs are available for you to take. This year, of course, with COVID, we will be doing it virtually. If you're even considering graduate school, I recommend you going to this grad fair. I know Kimberly and I went together last semester and got tons of information about what we were interested in. I got information about what she was interested in because we were together and she got information about what I was interested in. They are there to answer all of your questions. I, it was very informative. They give you more information than you need right then and there, but at the same time, it was helpful to be ahead of the game and know what is expected and what you need to do, what your next steps are after graduation. So these are the two sessions. I'm sure they will come out in the email as well as it is later in the month. We can send out another reminder about the grad fair. And if you attend, tag us on social media. Let us know that you are there. We love to see that you guys are active in the university and just acknowledging that the next step is available to you and taking those steps forward. All right, fun Friday. This is near and dear to my heart. Fun Friday, we started last semester. We play virtual games on Jackbox. I don't know if anybody's familiar with Jackbox games, but it's, I, I think we, we had about 25, 30 different games that we would play. We actually started on Friday and ended up moving it to Sunday nights just because of conflict of schedules. So this QR code you guys can scan. It just kind of lets us know who's interested um, any ideas you guys have towards Fun Friday, but we are going to use the platform of Jackbox Games. It is just a debriefing at the end of the week. We can all take our teaching caps off and just have fun with one another, get to know one another more. And we also invite anyone in the household that might also want to play. I know my husband played with us last year every time. He wouldn't miss it. He'd ask is it happening tonight? And they all asked if he wasn't there where he is. So anyone, and I know we had parents play with us. I mean, anyone's invited. We just want to make this a platform for all of us to connect and debrief at the end of our week. Is Jackbox really appropriate for the teaching club? <laughs> well, that's <laughs> Fun Friday won't be recorded. So they don't know. <laughs> We will have a, be able to have a little bit more fun because it won't be broadcasted to YouTube for everyone in the world. To okay. See. Um, Nobody so needs to know. I am the king at Murder Mystery House or whatever yes. it's called. Yes. We are excited for it. We want you guys to be excited for it. We want it to be, I know a lot of us are missing the social aspect of college right now. Um, regardless of how old you are, we all miss social interaction. <laughs> so um, if this is uh, something you guys are interested in, please fill out the form because we really want to start this with you guys and have a little bit of fun that isn't going to be recorded. Yes, definitely. Like I said, take your teacher hat off for the night and show us your true colors. I know it started last, Actually, in the fall semester, we had a end of the semester party. Um, basically, our last meeting turned into just us hanging out, knowing, getting to know each other a little more. And this is our way to do it virtually. We started it last semester with the pandemic. Um, we tried to figure out ways for all of us to connect. And this is what we came up with. It's a, a way for us to get to know you better and get to know you in a different way.
So if you could fill out that form, I saw that it was in the chat as well. It will help us out and we can get this started as soon as possible. We'll also be sending, um, there's gonna be a couple of forms that you guys are filling out today. Sorry, I should have prefaced that in the beginning. Um, if you feel like you wanna wait to fill them out, they will be in the email that we'll send out um, on Friday. So don't feel the need to do them right now if you feel uncomfortable or wanna pay attention or something. Yeah, Paul, please don't do it while you're driving. <laughs> I'm just screenshotting the QR code so I can be lazy and do them later. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Carla, you want to take this slide away? Yes, ma'am. So we know that October is known for many different events between them. It's um, Domestic Violence Awareness Month. We know it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And we know it's also Filipino American History Month. So in our efforts to promote diversity, not just in the classroom, but in our clubs and in all the environments we're surrounding ourselves in, we wanted to share some book recommendations, both fiction and nonfiction, that mainly for elementary um, future educators, um, but we just wanted to share so all other educators can just have it in the back of their minds and look up um, for books and resources that you can share for your students depending on the level you'll be teaching. So with that being said, um, we're sharing some Filipino American books for your diverse classroom library, which we hope is a goal that you have once you enter the classroom setting. So the first book that we have is Willie Wins. I actually got this one. Um, Kayla, she's on this call. She recommended a great website called Thrift Books. And I actually got that book for $5 where it retails to $18 and it's in great quality. So I highly recommend you look it up. Um, other fiction books that we have um, for elementary students is Pan de Sal Saves the Day and Ay Naku. And then some um, nonfiction books that just represent Filipino celebrations and traditions are Filipino celebrations, Filipino friends, and it's all about the Philippines. So we highly recommend you just kind of go out your way to make sure that you make your classroom as inclusive and welcoming to your students. So yes, hope you liked this. <laughs> and also another suggestion is you can use different videos online of read alouds if you want them to say the second book like Carla just did and I'm not gonna repeat it because I won't say it like she did. <laughs> but read alouds online are also very effective. I know I'm in a fifth grade classroom and we have a read aloud every morning on our morning news and the kids are so engaged, their jaws are to the floor, they just love it. So secondary majors, incorporate them. Any diverse, any diversity in the classroom is needed. And this is a way, e quick and easy way to throw it into your instruction during the day. Okay. And we know that it's a little bit close to seven, but we highly recommend that you get on your phones if you haven't already and register to vote. The deadline was supposed to be last night, however, due to some technical difficulties with the website, it was extended until 7 p.m. So I know that when Michelle did the game, most of us, if not all, had our cameras on when we asked if you were gonna vote. So um, just in case you haven't, register to vote because it's important, you know? You have to take into consideration that it's a right and a privilege that not many Americans have. Um, people that have been convicted, people that are under U.S. colonies, such as like my friends and family back home in Puerto Rico. This is not a privilege I had three years ago. I moved now, so it's important to just exercise your right to vote, especially for those who don't have a voice in these elections, but will be severely impacted by the decisions of policymakers. Oh, so that being said, I just wanted to um, show some um, deadlines here that I added in this infograph. As you can see, you can still apply to vote by mail if you haven't. The deadline is October 27, um, 24th. So if you don't feel comfortable going to the polls to vote, make sure that you apply before or 
hopefully before. I don't really like leaving it for the day of because then something like yesterday can happen. Um, so please try to vote beforehand. Um, but if you can't, you can just vote on November 3rd, which is also the date um, that you can go to the actual polls. Um, so that being said, if you're going to the polls, please be mindful of the poll workers and fellow voters and wear your mask and take the appropriate measures to just keep yourself and those surrounding you safe. There is a question in the chat from Jessica. Um, she asked, do you know how we can check if our requested mail-in ballot is processed? I believe that if you go to um, where you register to vote, it should come up as like your status. Cause I know that I've been receiving a lot of spam calls and just text asking me, are you voting? Can we count on your vote for blah, blah, blah. Um, so I'm not sure cause I just got my vote and I was like, oh, my ballot. So I'm like, okay, so they got it. Um, but I have been told that if you go on the website, there should be a status update and you should see it there. You also should be able to um, track your mail-in ballot as well on the same website. Um, I believe you should just have to log in and put in your information and it should give you an update on your stuff. And also if you guys are, if you requested a mail-in ballot, I know I personally will not be mailing mine. I'm going to drop it off at a polling location, which is also an option for you if you're towards the end of the deadline right now and you're, you know, you're going to request your mail-in, but you're not sure if it's going to get there in time. Um, that is always an option. You can go to any polling place and drop off your mail-in ballot. Yeah, and real quick, with mail-in ballots, it's really important that you put your ballots in the secrecy sleeve, because if not, it counts as a naked vote, and it, it's just a lost vote. And also, please use the same blue or black pen. I know we're teachers and we love color. Please, no time for the orange, red, yellow, whatever pens blue or black and make sure it's the same one because we don't want your votes to not count. Perfect. Thank you, Carla. And also, I know if we do a mail-in option, it's not the same, but if you do go out and vote, take a picture, tag us on social media with your sticker. I know when we had local elections, what was it, a month ago, I put my sticker on my mask and took a picture to remember that time. It's a crazy time we're living in. And also if you do a mail-in ballot, you could also take a picture. Zelly has hers. I'm take a picture sure of you. Go Kyla. Sorry, I'm pretty sure they, my internet's so bad. I'm so sorry. Um, I'm pretty sure they send you the sticker anyways when you do a mail-in ballot. So if you save it for election day, you can still do that and post and tag us. And I know a lot of places are also give uh, discounts on election day if you have an I voted sticker. So I don't know about you, but I'm saving mine. Um, highly recommend. Perfect. And social media points, don't quote me, but I think, or social media posts, don't quote me. I think they're three points a post, two points, something like that. Um, but everything counts. Tag us, make sure we see you. We love to have active, active members that we can retweet, get you in contact with other aspiring educators or educators around the world. All right. If you don't know already, this is our website. We update it frequently and we can, we always keep the calendar updated, which you can see on the left-hand side. Um, how to join us if you aren't already a part of our association, different resources we've collected over the years. I know there's tons of resources on FTCE exams, any um, collaborations that we've done, any conferences we've gone to, any resources we've collected, all of our members have inputted them onto the same drive and you have access to them now that you are a part of us. So any information you, you want to know, you can find here. If you can't, email us and we'll make sure we add it on there. We think we've covered all the bases that are needed and it's just always a good place. I know for the meeting tonight, I asked, access the calendar through our website just so I could have the Zoom link on my computer. Really quick, sorry. Um, sure. a, Angelica, who does our beautiful and wonderful website, she's wonderful. She's IT, truly, she is IT, not me. <laughs> um, but she, uh, her and I were just talking, there is a, I completely forgot it was on there, there is a points 
thing on our website, but it is from spring 2020. Um, so we are in the works of updating that and it should be up fairly soon, but we'll include that in the email if it's up by Friday so that you guys can check your points on your own and not have to contact us because I know it is kind of a hassle. All right, our team up calendar. This is how you guys signed in to our meeting. And this is how you sign up for any events that are upcoming or occurring that you sign up for. You can sign up last minute. We try to keep them open till the event starts and sometimes even after just in case you forget. But you can sign up on the team up. It gives you a reminder. I know I get a notification if I'm signed up for something and it says, oh, at five o'clock tonight, you have you know, a night ed talk at 4.30 and it just, it keeps me accountable so I don't have to have my planner out and writing everything in. I know someone had problems earlier accessing it, but I think it's all figured out now. And so if you have any problems, just let us know, but it's on our website as well. If you don't get this QR code, it is, it has everything, everything that we have going on, any, I know we have state, state leader calls, chapter leader calls, which you guys are more than welcome to join in. Um, it's just chapters experiencing and saying what their members are doing. So we talk about you guys for the hour that we might be on the call. Anybody that is looking for an officer role in the future can also join these calls. Just get a sense of what goes on and at the state level, because these are members at the state and the chapters in Florida. And then also our state calls are all states and what they're doing. We get tons of information, tons of good advice, anything that we can pass along to you, we get from those calls. Another tool we use is the Remind app. We use this app, it sends you a notification just like TeamUp, but this comes directly from your officers. It will be a text sent out. I know this morning I got one about the meeting and I always get one about the night ed talk as well. Again, it just helps you remember. I know we all have tons of things going on, tons of meetings, tons of virtual meetings now. It's not like we can just be on campus and go to what room 116 and have our meeting. <laughs> we all are virtual. So this just keeps you accountable helps you remember what's going on. Just another little reminder. Also found on our website, if you need it at a later time. And then social media. As I've said multiple times through this evening, we love to see you active on social media. We love to see your post. We love to retweet you. We want to know what's going on. Especially if you're in the classroom, what are you guys doing? You know, what's working, what's not working. Um, and like we said, a professional social media account is not required, but is definitely encouraged for you to do for your future. Start now. I know I started over a year ago and I have tons of followers all over around the world. I get multiple ideas off of them. Um, it's just a way to express yourself, share what you're doing, others share what they're doing. If it doesn't work, they share that it doesn't work and maybe you don't try it or they could come on Twitter at the end of their day and say this rocked today. Like the kids were so engaged and then you might take it into the classroom the next day. I know I've taken multiple ideas that have been shared and taken them to the classroom such as trash a can I did one day off of somebody on Twitter. I did a whole vocabulary unit on trash a can. They had to write a word and the definition that they learned in the lesson that day and throw it into the trash can like a basketball. If they made it, their team got a point. And if they missed, their team didn't get a point. Um, just different things to keep the kids engaged. Everybody that's a teacher is there for other teachers. We're all there for each other all around the world. So you might as well be a part of the community. I wanted to give out a shout out real quick to Shayna because thanks to her, I found out that the Oliver Jeffers exhibition was going on in the Orlando Museum of Art, which as you may or may not know, he's the illustrator of the very amusing um, The Day the Crayons Quit kids books. So it's still on, it's until October 25th, I believe. Um, so yeah, shout out Shayna for letting us know. 
no problem. <laughs> was it really nice? Yeah, it was, it was really, really nice. nice. I have like the crayons hanging up. Yeah, I was like, that's so cute. That's such it's a good really idea. It's really cute, and there's rarely people going. So if you, I know. Going, I saw like the big poster outside, and I was like, mm -hmm. no way. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, and we get five dollars tickets being used. Yeah. Up. So make sure you take your ID if you choose to go. I agree with Sally in the chat. If you could please send any and all information, please. <laughs> um, also, really quick to go on another tangent. Uh, I'm going to launch a poll really quick. I um, want to see, it's completely anonymous, so don't feel bad about this, but um, I'm wondering if you guys are interested in a social media meeting, just a straight up meeting about social media. What can you do? What are your, what are your tools? Um, I've never done a poll before. So I just launched it. Okay, good. You're answering. Fantastic. Cool. Um, so yeah, so we're interested to see. Okay, yes. Okay, yes. We are. Yes. Okay. We are wanting a meeting on social media. So we will absolutely make that happen um, for you guys. We are 93% yes. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Um, I know we have a we did one last year and we didn't want to bore our members this year by doing another one, but we have a lot of new faces, which I love to see. Um, so we will absolutely do that for you guys. And obviously we're in a more virtual environment than we were last year. So it is even more needed. Um, so yes, absolutely. We will do that and we'll keep in touch with you guys about that. And talking about social media, I saw Carla when she visited the museum, she posted it on social media and then Dr. Spalding went and posted it on social media. So just another thing that I found out about it on social media. So just like I said, it's another form of communication. I know SNEA Twitter page just retweeted Brad Meltzer. He's the author who does the I am who or who am I like I am. I know he just put out I am Anne Frank, the little books with the bobblehead characters. Um, he's doing virtual, not meetings, but like conferences, I guess, about his books, him and the author that writes the books with him. So I just retweeted that. So if you check out the SNEA Twitter page, you can see that event. Tag us if you go, show us what you learned, show us. I mean, everything's virtual now. So it's a lot easier for all of us to do more things in the comfort of our home. So check it out. If you see a cool event like Carla did, send us a tweet, tag us on Instagram, anything, because we will retweet you and share it to all our members. Does anyone have any questions for us or any suggestions even? I know most of, some of us, especially the members that were here last year have a professional page on social media. So possibly they could give good advice and help us out in the meeting as well. I personally just put in the chat again our group me. Um, it blows up some days, some days it doesn't, um, but it is a really quick way for you guys to ask any sort of education questions. I know I have asked multiple either very dumb questions or very complicated questions. Um, so that is our community, community support, I would say. Um, and also Samantha asked uh, for the number for text notifications. Michelle, could you go back to the remind slide for me? so that she could get that. Thank you. Yeah, more about GroupMe. I was going to bring that up and I totally forgot. Um, it's our another hats off, hats on teaching. We can be us, not that we can't be us here, but we get to ask questions that we might not be comfortable enough to ask in the meeting or you know, to our supervising teachers if we're in the school. You can come on, ask for support, ask for advice. We share what we're doing in the classroom. I know a lot of us in internship too go on there and ask. I know Kimberly had a question about her PDP. That's a platform that we use to go on and ask if we need help. FTCE exams, we also talk about, we give each other advice for who's passed it. I know Angelica just passed hers, congratulations. 
So it's just a platform for us to be able to talk, communicate, and just share with one another any information we have that might help somebody else. Any other questions? All right. You guys are free to go. That was our second meeting. Thank you for being here. Make sure you join in some night ed talks that are coming up and let us know if you want to facilitate some of them as well. Don't forget to tag us on social media. Thank you guys very much. I appreciate it. Have a great night. Bye. Thank you. Bye everyone and congrats Bonnie.